Hello, it's Sparky Pete in Liverpool in the isolation wing of Peacock Towers. And in this little clip, I'm just going to take you through a comparison of ZS results. Now, I've got my multifunction instrument set on no trip loop for this one because this particular circuit's backed up by an RCD. And if we didn't have that on no trip loop, it would just trip out the RCD. It's what used to be called a D lock back in the olden days. And uh, I've got the um, tester plugged into a socket in the kitchen. If we look at expected values, if we go to the regs, it tells us there for a B-type breaker, 32 amp, 1.37. But that is at the conductor operating temperature. Now, this is a little thing they like to play on in exams. They like to give you the 100% value because what they want you to do then is to take 80% of that value. It's what's called the rule. It's been called the rule of thumb for a long time. Now, the 80% values, the ones we directly compare with are in the on-site guide and GN3. Now, if we look in for a B-type breaker, we can see the B-type breaker, 32 amps, which is what's protecting the circuit, and we've got 1.1. So in this particular test, 1.1 is the figure to beat. Let's go ahead and take the test. So here we go. So no trip loop, takes a while. 0.81. So that's a pass because what we were after, if we go back to our, uh, if we go back to the table, what we were after was 1.1. Now what that means effectively is that if the earth fault loop impedance is less than that value, that that circuit will operate in less than 0.4 of a second under earth fault conditions. That's the whole point of the exercise. Now what we do in that particular situation is we take that ZS value from every socket on that circuit and we'd record the highest value as being the ZS value for that circuit. So there we are. Um, as always, uh, constructive feedback appreciated because nobody knows everything. And as always, more to say.